All right, welcome back. So we are looking at the church planning core team. Uh, we'll get into uh, the fourth point. We looked at complementing each other's gifts and skills. Uh, so we must be able to do that. The fourth point is all are committed to the common vision of the church plant. Now, it's not like we all have different visions, right? Again, we talked about it. We all have the same vision and we're committed to that vision. Uh, there's no 80% uh, commitment, no, 100% commitment. This is what, if this is my role in the core team, I'll give my 100% to fulfill uh, the, the common vision of the church. Then the leader of the church planting team is clearly identified and all other members support the leader. Right? So now, even though we are a team, right? You got four of us here, right? Chira, Nikhil, Francis, and me. We are a team, but there should be one leader. The one who God has put the vision in, in the person's heart, right? That he, he is the leader of the team. Now, it's not like just because that person is the leader, he's in control over everything. No, it's just that we he guides in terms of discussions. He guides in terms of decisions to be made for the organization. Now, for example, um, you know, as a church, uh, APC, we, we have our pastors meetings every week. Right, every first week of the month. And so we meet together. And so many, many of discussions that we have, many of the conferences and the things that we do as a church, we first discuss together. Sometimes the senior pastor brings out the plan. He says, can we do this? And then we open it up for discussion. Uh, there are many, many things that we have agreed to. He said, okay, this is going to work. It'll, it'll really work. Right? For example, teens church right uh, to restart teen church so we all discussed do we really need it is it something that can we can do and we all thought yes we need teen church right we all agree to it so there are some things that have that we agree to but there are some things that you know the senior pastor has put across but we have said you know can we wait can we think about it or should this may work this may not work and so it may be still on hold so what what is the what is the thing here there is the leader He's identified as a leader, but uh, as a leader, he's not taking control. It's just that he's the person who's guiding and leading the organization, right? Uh, so many, many uh, conferences and events that we do, uh, you know, some of them are, are uh, plans that we have come up with as associate process. So can we do this? Can we do this? And then we, together we've discussed it as a team. And if it works, we've gone ahead with it. I would give you this best, the, a good example from the Bible is uh, Peter, James, and John. Right? Uh, now, everyone identified Peter as the leader of the church. What about James and John? Were they wrong? Were they uh, somebody who, no, they were with Jesus. They were there with Jesus. Right? Uh, they, were, they walked with Jesus. Everywhere Jesus went, it was Peter, James, and John. But why is it that everywhere we see Peter, Acts chapter 1, there were many disciples, all the disciples, and there were 120. Peter stood up and he preached. There was this some kind of leadership authority that was given to Peter. Right? Uh, Peter and John went to pray. Right? John was just standing as a spectator, but Peter said, silver and gold I don't have. What I have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up and walk. Acts chapter 15, James is there looking uh, you know he's now the leader of the church and and you got even peter and the other disciples they gave you know there was something that okay this is peter so that will be there but again as leaders you know, just because i am it's my vision and what i am doing it should never be dictatorial remember ministry and especially church planting is never a one man show never Yes, God speaks to us now. Since God has put the vision in in me, God may give me new ideas and new plans and new strategies, all of it. But it doesn't mean that God cannot use us. Right? 
He may give you the plan, Francis another plan. He may give Nikhil another plan. He may give Chira another plan. We're all one, working together as a team. But the way he ministers to me may be different the way he ministers to each one of you. But fulfilling the common vision of the church. So you get that? You get that, right? So we learn to work together as a team. And one of the, uh, I think, critical things that we must understand while working together as a team is to walk in humility and walk in love. When we walk in love, we learn to respect one another, we love one another, and we walk in humility. So none of us see sees ourselves bigger or smaller than each other. Don't say, hey, we're all the same. We're all one. Another perfect example is Stephen and the choosing of the seven in the book of Acts. Why would, you know, full of, full of the spirit, full of wisdom, right? Good uh, character. And what are you doing? Serving food. You know, if I was Stephen, I would have said, hey, you know what? I know I've prayed over people. Many signs, wonders, and miracles have happened. Why are you asking me to put food? Put me in the ministry team. This is all administration. I don't want. He didn't say that. As he was serving the food, he was able to use opportunities and do the ministry. And even in his stoning, uh, you know, he gives this brilliant entire sermon uh, pointing towards Jesus. Right? So, so again, we look at each other, our task, everything that we do, we are one. And this is a culture that over time we have incorporated in APC and we continue to incorporate. You can be a person who's working one year in APC. You can be a person who's working 20 years in APC. We are still the same. Right? Responsibilities are different. Uh, there's, there's the responsibilities, opportunities may be different, but we are the same. Why? Because we are all working the same vision to be salt and light in the city. Now, all the Bible college students and, you know, uh, and maybe even the staff, if we all go out together, you know, we are going for the missions trip coming up in October and we go, we're all one. Nowhere is it like, you know, oh, they are high and we are low. Nowhere. We're all one. We're all going together with one heart, one mind. Now, you may be doing many things in that conference. And the pastors may be standing and preaching. Doesn't mean that we are doing a greater task. For the conference to happen, we're all working together to fulfill what God wants us to do. And so um, as a church planning team, we must be clearly identify who's the leader and also be able to balance it by working together as a team. Now, next one. How can we prepare from a distance? Right now, especially as a if when God gives you uh, uh, the vision of you know planting a church or planting a ministry, there's a lot of preparation that's involved. And and thankfully, in a time and and a season that we are living in, ninety percent of the preparation can be done online. Yes, right. So, for example, you want to start a, open a trust. You don't have to think, oh, how do I open a trust? I don't know anything. I I have to learn all of this. Nothing. You just go to Google. Open religious trust. How to open a religious trust? You will have AI now with all AI, everything. They'll tell you everything. Every detail you want is there in that. It's very simple. Lawyers near me. You'll get a list of lawyers. Call one of them. Ask, you know, I want to open a religious trust. Okay, sir, get these documents, come. Do you have uh, this thing? And they'll do half of it. Do you have the vision, everything? OK, they'll send you a document, edit, put what you want to put, send it to him. Everything can be done in no time. It's gone are those days where I have to sit, stand in the queue with your papers. No. Right? So you can prepare from a distance, prepare remotely, gather information online. Right? If I want to start a church in, in uh, example, uh, Indoor or in Jammu and Kashmir. So what should I do? I can't go there every two, every week and come back. There's no point. I can do all the work here, all the paperwork. I can open a religious trust from here to and plant a church in Jammu and Kashmir. You can do it. And things have changed. And thank God for that, right? Uh, and so you 
begin to survey. You can read about Jammu Kashmir, right? So if I'm opening, a, starting a church there, I'll go to Google and I start reading. Okay, Kashmir. What are the places? What is the weather like? Oh, uh, you know, what days are people free? What what kind of work do people do? What is the uh, dangers in that place? What is the religious uh, tolerance or intolerance there? What is uh, the culture there? How do I go and plant a church? Do I know people there? Uh, anyone whom I know? Uh, so you begin to do that survey, and we learn more on the survey phase there. So most of it, 90% of it, can be done online. So even each one of you here, you're sitting in Bangalore, but you can, even before going to your hometown, you can, you can already start a trust. That's a lot of paperwork. You may have to go once to show uh, your you know your office or whatever or your main re residence where the trust is going to be registered on but apart from that you don't need to be there everything can get done right so you can do a lot of preparation remotely understand the city from the distance so we looked at uh, natural and spiritual dynamics so you understand the city what works in bangalore will not work in bombay what works in bombay will not work in indore what works in Indoor won't work in Delhi. What works in India may not work in uh, Australia. What works in Australia may not work in America. So learn the natural dynamics and the spiritual dynamics of that location where God is leading you to. Just a very basic example. So for example, if a person has lived in India all his life, right, and he is moving, he or she is moving to another country, say America, right? As a family, uh, together you're moving to America. What will you do? Will you go there and say, thing, okay, now what to do? You've got off the airport. Now. What, do, what do I do? Will you do that? No, right? You will be fully prepared. Okay. So in India itself, you will go to Google. Okay. Firstly, I need some dollars in my pocket. So how do I convert that money? Okay. Two. What is the way of transport? After I get off the airport, how far is the house or the hotel where I have to go to? Is it 20 kilometers? Okay, that's far. What is the normal transport that people use? Is it trains? Is it cabs? Is it uh, you know uh, metros? What, what, what is the normal transport? So you do all your research here. You won't get off there and say, okay, now what do I do? That means we have not planned. Right? For example, I just, when, when I just went to Sydney, uh, when I, the moment I got down, I had read about it, and then my I've got family, everyone there, so <clears throat> I knew okay what should be done. So I had dollars with me. I knew that okay, I have to go here. There's right opposite. There's a train station. You go there, you buy a card, uh, and then you can use that card for traveling. I just knew it. But I went to Google, read about it, uh, and then I read about the culture of the place, what's happening there. Uh, what is, you know, especially in different countries, just like India, north of the country will be a different kind of people, south will be different kind, uh, east and west, everywhere. It's very dispersed. People are, it's a very cosmopolitan crowd. Uh, so you learn about the place. And that's what this, this is, right? The natural and spiritual strategies. And then you write them down and discuss with your team. So I've got my team here. Saying, hey, we are starting a church. Where was it? Mumbai or Indoor? Mumbai? So we are starting the church in Mumbai. So then I'd say, okay, these are the dynamic, these are some things that I saw. Okay, one thing I've noticed is that I don't know if you have noticed, but in Mumbai, churches, there are many, many churches which started 3 a.m., 3 p.m. I don't know why. Okay, but they started 3 p.m. They have afternoon church. It was very strange for me. 3 p.m. church. 3 p.m. is the time when we rest and sleep. There's 3 p.m. church and people come. I, I, I found it very strange, right? But that's how it is in Mumbai. And then you have evening church, 6.30 to 8 o'clock. By 8 o'clock, I want to sleep. Eight, my, my dinner also is over. Now, I'm sitting with the team and saying, now, see, we have to change. Bangalore, this is what we do. But once we go there, these are the things which changes. So we must be ready to have an afternoon service. You'll say, hey, pastor, what afternoon service and all? I, I can't. No, we have to change. 
right? Write down, discuss with the team. Thirdly, pray over these together. After you make these points, pray over it. Listen, ask God to bring, give you the wisdom. Ask God to bring the right people in the right place at the right time. Ask God to bring the right opportunities to open the right doors. Only God can do it. And I always say this, if God opens a door, no man can shut the door. Really, I'm saying this. I've, I've seen it in my own life. If God opens, there is, there is no way, no man, no enemy can stop it. If God opens a door. So the best way right, to be confident and to know that God is with you is to go back in prayer and ask God to open those doors. God, open a door, a supernatural door, that I will know it is you. Right? Uh, just, you know, one of the examples that I always say is, that I've always used is, and it, it really, uh, every time I speak of it, it, it really brings out the goodness of God, the grace of God. But when we were in Mangalore, uh, we were about 10, 9 or 10 people in church. And I remember we used to go to these colleges, okay, and some of the best colleges in Mangalore. We used to stand out and give these tracks. Right? And so, and this is, I'm not talking about one hour, I'm talking about the whole day give out tracks, get people to, you know, and then from one place, we'll go to another college. So the whole day, and sometimes there was absolutely no fruit, zero fruit, right? And sometimes it would be like just, you know, Mangalore would be scorching hot. And I think to myself, why am I doing this? This is not bearing any fruit, right? I, see, firstly, what I did was I, we, we sat down together as a core team in, in church and we said, okay, there are a lot of youth, there are a lot of colleges, four years, five years, they're away from their home. It's very easy for them to go away from God. But there are also people who are believers who want to come to church, right? Uh, so how do we connect with them? How do we let them know there's a church where they can learn, they can grow, they can serve? How do we do that? We have to go and tell, right? Romans, Paul writes and says, how will they know if we don't go and tell? So we used to go whole day, no fruit. So then I remember we used to pray, God, if it is, you open a door, you know, because we used to go and try to enter the college and the security say, no, no, you're not allowed. And they just chase us out, right? chase us out. They say, no, no, you go that side. You can't even be near the parking, they would say. So we'd stand near the road. Then from, this happened for almost six months. And we, during that six months, we used to pray, say, God, open a door, Lord. One door you open, right? That we can go into this college. There are more than 3,000 people in this college. We just open one door. We used to pray. And I'll tell you, even if I think of it and I say it, it gives me goosebumps. Pastor had sent an email saying, go and meet, meet this father in this college. Because this father used to look after the, the St. Joseph's, the place where we have Central, right? So he used to be the principal there. He has moved to Manglo as the principal. First, I sent an email saying, you just go meet him. He wanted to some books. Right. So I remember I just took those books and I went. And I went straight to the principal. The father is the principal. So he went. He said, uh, uh, you're from APC. I said, yes. He said, you have a church here. I said, yes, father, father, we have a church. This is our church, about 10 people. So you are part of APC? I said, yes, we, we have a church here. Is it the same as that Bangalore? I said, yes. He said, OK, I trust APC. That's all I did. I took three or four books, gave it to him. I wanted to walk out, but he, we were talking. I trust APC. So I was. then he's telling me the whole story. I was a the principal there. And, you know, yeah, APC, very honorable with the way that you're uh, so, you uh, you know, we built a good, healthy relationship. What is your name? OK, this is, uh, so this is what I want to do now. See, this is the degree block. We have degree students, right? So this is a uh, three-year course. Degree students, there are uh, about 3,000 odd students here. What you do? is you come every week, once a week. You teach whatever you want from the Bible. Okay. 
do you have a team? I said, I just said, yes. I didn't have anyone. I said, yes. I said, yeah, I can bring people. Okay. How many people you have? I have, father. how many people you want? I have it. He said, okay. So then on each day, I will give you each class, um, scripture, one hour I'll give you. So you get your people and bring them to teach. I said, okay, sure. Now what's happened? Whole right into the court. Then that moment he said, the, he, you know, the father, he called the uh, staff and he said, give him an ID card. Now I have an ID card. As what? As staff of one of the best colleges in Bang Mangalore, where I was standing out and giving out tracks. Then he said, "You, how many ever ID cards you need, you tell me, so that the security will not stop you. You can come in. We went in. We began to go right into the college, into the classroom, teaching. Then before this conversation could end, he said, I will speak to the 11th and 12th section, the principal there. I know him. I'll speak to him. And we'll get somebody to go there also. So are you ready for that? Do you have a team? I said, I have a team. <laughs> So he gave open doors for that. Then he said, see, our uh, students are going through many drug addiction, pornography. They're going through all of these things. So what? can you come and teach our teach staff? You teach our staff how to handle these students. Now, he's met me only for two or three minutes. He doesn't know who I am. First time he's seeing me, you teach our staff. Okay. Then he said, I want to discuss more with you. I have to go. Uh, but these three you do. Degree, PUC, and teaching our stuff. I said, okay, Father. And I came out and I sat. I thought, what is this? <laughs> what is happening? It all happened just like this. For six months outside. Now, then the, that, you know, that person said, no, you don't go anywhere. We have a special room for you. They took us, took me to a staff room. The same people who used to say, go that side and stand, he came with a tea and biscuits. <laughs> Sir, please help. God will, God will honor you. Right? He will honor. So now we are going there everywhere. Now what happened is, these other places got to know. Other colleges. You're going to, you're going to Aloysius College. Yeah, we are teaching uh, Aloysius College. Yes. How do they give you permission? We know the father. Please come to our college also. So I think you know the story. We went to, we are going to about eight colleges only through one door. What if we had not stood out on that road, gone through all that embarrassment, shame? They used to crush it and throw it. They, some of them told me, you don't have any other work or what? You know? They have, but now they're sitting and listening as we are teaching. We did a Christmas concert, the entire auditorium. We had 2,500 students sitting in the auditorium. That father said, uh, he had called me. He said, can you do a Christmas concert, Christmas program? You, you have a band, anything in your church? I said, we have. Does the college have a band? They have many bands. I said, you have a band? I had no band. I had one person with me who knew a few chords in the keyboard. You have a band? I said, yeah, I have a band. He said, we'll decorate the whole auditorium. Nothing. You don't do anything. Just come, do a concert, preach the word, and uh, just make sure that you give them a little of the gospel so they know what Christmas is. I said, no problem at all. We did a concert. We shared the word. We, uh, we asked people to give their lives to Christ. Few of them gave their lives to Christ. But all of this happened to hire that hall auditorium. It's about 1.5 lakhs each time you hire it. From that day, we've used the auditorium at least three, four times. Every time he gave it to us for free. Why? They're staff. It's like, you know, you're staff of the college. So I have the ID card. See, when, when you leave it in prayer and when God opens the door, you will, you will be surprised at what God can do. Right? So, even as you do that, what we some of the practical things that we did, we began to develop a, a contact list. So there were people who would come and talk to us. They would give us their phone numbers and say, you know, I want, I'm going through this problem. So we develop a contact list. We tell them, hey, 
we, we are available for counseling to meet you and all of that. Then uh, develop additional information about what's happening in the city. Uh, recommend places where a church plant may be useful. Uh, connect with senior pastors in the city. That's something that I personally did when I went there. I connected with people, so uh, especially senior pastors there. Um, uh, provide support in logistics. Uh, now, especially when you're connecting with local churches, pastors, if other uh, who are already, you know, planted churches there, make sure that you never go into these churches and try to steal sheep the wrong way. Right? Even as you go, stand in integrity, stand in honor, know what you stand for, learn to understand that there is divine principles, divine order in God's uh, kingdom. So if God has called you, he will bring people who should, who are meant to be in your church. Don't be in a hurry getting people from other church and then causing a problem. Those who have to be in your church will be in your church. Those whom God will send to you, they will be there. Right? Don't go trying anything else. Now, even as you do the background work, There'll be a time when, if you are in another city, so so for example, now as a church planting team, we are all in Bangalore, so we have to move on site. There'll be a time, in God's timing, God will open the door. We discern that timing and we step in in faith and we go to the city. So now we got Chira, Nikhil, Francis, and me, all four of us, first time stepped into Mumbai, ready to plant the church, but we are not clueless. One, we know the vision. Two, we we have done our practical thing of you know preparing, understanding what the city is all about. Three is the trust and uh, the the you know religious trust. Everything, the paperwork, everything, the legal stuff is already done. So we are ready that way. Now begins the survey phase, right? Uh, where you 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 plan, you prepare for finances. Now this is another very important area. The mistake that some of us do is say, God has called me for ministry. Quit the job immediately and sit at home or wait for the right opportunity to come. Now, this would be the wrong thing to do. We work if we are working and God is calling you for ministry. Take your time. Don't quit the job, pray and say, God, I need one lakh. No. Don't do that mistake right be prepared learn how to prepare yourself financially be a good steward of whatever god has given you now for example i'll just use an example of what happened to me so i wanted to join bible college i was working in the corporate sector now i knew if i joined bible college two years two years i'll not have any funds no income coming in every month so what should i do Begin to save, right? So I began to save money. Okay, one for the fees. I have to pay the fees, right? Two years fees. Two is I need income. I need some kind of funds to help me out if I'm staying in the hostel or throughout the month. And three is I must also be able to help my parents during this time, right? Because they are not working, they are retired. So I must be able to, I can't say, no, now I'm in full-time ministry, God will provide for you. What did you go? What did Paul say? If you can't look after your own home, don't go into ministry. How can you do that? Right? So I prepared myself financially. So I worked for two additional years. Every day, those are the two hardest years of my life. Because those two years, I knew that one day I'm going to quit and one day I'm going to join Bible college. But it was very hard. But I knew it was important. Right? It's easy for me to quit and come. But I knew that I didn't want to depend on anyone and I wanted to be financially stable so that the two years I can, I know, okay, after two years I can join back the same company. I'd also spoken to them, right? I want a two year break because I want to do this course. After two years I'll come back and join. And they were okay with it, right? So you may choose to work professionally for a period. Uh, so you can also work and you can plant the church. You can do both. Right, uh, be until a time when the church grows to a certain extent where you can be fully supported by the church. 
Now think of this. The Apostle Paul, the great Apostle Paul himself, worked as a tent maker. Right? Uh, he had his team as well, a few friends, Aquila and Priscilla, who uh, also were tent makers. He worked, he looked after his own needs and the needs of his team. Apostle Paul didn't feel entitled. He said, Hey, listen. Among all of you, I had the best vision. I saw Jesus face to face. Number one. Two is, I'm an apostle. Right? I already planted a few churches in Galatia. I have lots to do. Please send funds for my trip, missions trip too. No. He said, he writes, he says, I worked. I paid for the bills. I supported my team. I didn't want to be a burden to any one of you. Even though you people wanted to support me, I chose not to. I worked with my own hands. I supported myself. Even towards the end of his life, imagine this. He's going to Rome. He can say, no, okay, man, now I don't have the strength to work. I've been beaten. I've been bruised, shipwrecked. I don't have any more strength. God, you provide for my needs. He is the one who wrote, no, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. Sometimes we put it only on the finance. Not so. Paul wrote it, but he also writes and he says he worked for the for the uh, for three years under Roman guard. He worked, he paid the rent for his own house. So what does it say? We need to be financially prepared. Prepared right now. Imagine, as a team, three of us have gone, four of us have gone, we've reached Mumbai. We've uh, taken up a house you know, just for now. And now we're thinking what to do. And now we've you know, pr probably planted the church, three, four people have come and they were. Now we've become 10 people. We need a place, right? We need a place. Now I'm saying, okay, Francis, Chira, you guys go out. Look out for any place around, you know. They come back and say, uh, you know, well, there are places, but it's quite expensive. This is the rent. This is the amount that we... Now, it's not like we have to... Imagine we go, we, we are unprepared. We say, oh, we don't have any money. What to do? What's going to happen? We'll book a ticket and come back to Bangalore. Yes or no? Or you'll say, oh, what is this? You are the one who had the vision. Nothing you've done. We have not planned properly. But if we have some funds, what we'll do is, okay, these are the funds. So let's use it and take up a good place for now. Right? Now, you got the place. Now, you're not going into that hall and saying, uh, God, please give us uh, two speakers, one monitor, three mics with mic stand, four jack-to-jack -jack cables, and three instruments. You do that, gone. Now, you know, practically, we have to have worship. So the least, especially now, the, the, the basic thing that you will need is at least two speakers, one instrument and three mics. Basic. So at least that we should have. So what we we have funds. We can buy it, keep it right. So then what is happening here? You're, you're, you're personally, you're financially, you're prepared. Two, your finances also for the church plant, you're prepared, right? You know, okay. So, for example, you've already put a budget. So I'll tell Nikhil, Nikhil, you go find out how much is the speakers, two speakers, two monitors, cables. I give him a whole list. Find out how much is it. He comes back and says it's about 2.5 lakhs. Okay. So then that's in our mind. We know, okay, 2.5. So we go, we buy what we need. But for that, we have already saved up. As a team, we have saved up. Now, if it's not saved up, we're not putting the bill 2.5 and saying, Lord Jesus, 2.5 is the bill, please. Um, can you please do it? The Lord will say, hey, this is unprepared. I didn't ask you to leave the job. Sometimes we try to do uh, things our way and put it and make it look like it's God's way. You understood what I said? Sometimes we do things our way and convince ourselves or make it look like God's way. That's not God's way at all. God is saying, I didn't tell you to quit the job. I told you to plant the church. I gave you the vision. You have put together everything. Did I tell you to quit the job? 
I can tell you. I had a plan. I would, there were some people in your office who was who I had in mind will support you for this. Now you quit and came. Now we have to do it your way instead of my way. You get what I'm saying? Right, so that is why we need that discernment, that understanding. Okay, God, should I do it? Is this the right time? We need to go back and be led by the Holy Spirit. Right, you can do the church plant without any support uh, from a church, but initially we should be able to be self-sustaining, meaning to to the initial part where we invest, we put what we have to put in planting a church. <clears throat> And then the time will come. We are self-sustaining in a, in a way that we we are uh, uh, the you know the funds that come in as a church. You are able to purchase, do whatever you have to do within itself. So that that could be also you know you can work, keep uh, you know uh, plant the church, keep serving in the church for many years, right? Uh, do both work and uh, you know be a pastor. Then there can, there could come a time where God can say, okay, now you can leave your job and get into this um, you know the church work full time right so now at each option carefully think of the pros and cons carefully in your personal life and even uh, in 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 your in your family life and financially think of the pros and cons now if i'm going to Mumbai to plant a church with all of you. I must think about your families as well. Right? I can't say all of you come, uh, we'll trust God for finances. No, I must be able to support you in some way because you have a family to look after. Right? And you know, things are going to change. You move to a new city, even though it's just within the same nation, new city, things will change. Right? So, what are the pros? Pros are in terms of ministry, these are the things we do. Um, you know, many lives touched. We'll start an English church, all of that. Cons. We'll be away from family. Uh, uh, we have to start from scratch. We don't know anyone. Uh, so how do we? So we got to work it out. Right? Don't be in a hurry. I always tell people, don't be in a hurry to jump into your calling. Take time. God made Moses wait 40 years to get into his calling. David, Paul, everyone waited. It's okay to wait, but start in the right way. Don't start something, right, that later on we are embarrassed about. If you start, you put your hands to the plow, you finish it. Right? Don't don't stop halfway and say I can't do this. No. Right? Carefully think through the pros and cons. Ultimately, you need to do what God leads you to do. Right? And remember, His Word is there, the Holy Spirit is there, He will lead you. He will lead us to the right people. You know, when you are faithful in small things, God will bring in people, bring in opportunities, and He will open doors that, you know, at the right time, and you feel that you know that it is God and nobody else. Right? God will lead you. But he expects you to be in his presence and to hear from him. If I'm too busy doing ministry and I don't have time to go back to God's word and prayer, I may end up making hundreds of mistakes. Right? But if we go to God's word, prayer, spend time in his presence, he will guide you. He'll give you the right step. He will tell you what to do. Right? I'm not saying like the heavens will open and Jesus will come. No. But he'll just give that word. He'll say, okay, go now. Now is the time you step in. Remember, God tells Joshua, you've waited long enough. The people of Israel have waited long enough. Get up. Be strong and courageous. It's time to move into the promised land. 40 years have been done. It's time we march in. God gave him the strategies. God opened the doors. The moment they... Uh, went through the walls of Jericho. God told him what to do. Imagine they went with all their spears and hammers and trying to break that wall down. God, you only told no go. No, I said go. Did I tell you what to do? There? Not yet. Let me tell you what to do. And Joshua heard from God. God told Joshua seven times around that, seven days, 
then I'll tell you what we do. Seventh time on the seventh day, blow your trumpets, the wall will come down. As they were doing it first day, second day, there were no cracks on the wall. Everything was the same. There was no sign of the wall breaking. But they did it. They were faithful. They obeyed God. And God broke the walls down. Right? So ask God to lead you. Again, in planning for personal needs, uh, needs of the family, you know, uh, uh, needs in the workplace or schooling for children. Now, these are again very, very important. Right? I can't say I'm doing full time ministry, so my children are at home, they're not going to school. That's foolish. I can't say I'm doing full time ministry and I'm not looking after my wife and children at home. There's no food at home, I'm doing full time ministry. No. No. We should be able to plan for our personal needs as well. Right now, I, I know some of us may be thinking, from where will we get the money? From where will we get the funds? You wait until the right time to launch. Right? Don't, don't, uh, don't step out in a hurry. Wait. Wait and ask God, should I go now? Should I wait? Should I go now? Should I wait? At the right time, he will provide, he'll provide these needs. But we need to be in step with God for that. Right? So think through these matters. Don't just do, you know, jump into this a decision just because I feel it or just because God told me to. Right? Uh, think through all of this. You know, if you're a bachelor and then God is putting in your heart to plant a church, it's much easier. Not many things to think about. Right? We can survive in a small room. But if you have a wife and children, you have a family to look after, everything changes. Right? You can't say God is more important than family. No. Right? So we got to think through all of this. Finally, planning for legal, administrative, and regulatory matters. Uh, as I said, you will have to be formed as a legal entity. Sometimes what people do is they plant the church, and as the church is growing, maybe 10, 20 people, then they you know, go get it registered. But uh, things have changed. right? So now you can just open the trust even now at any time. All you need is certain documentations, and then you can open the trust. But uh, like I've mentioned always, do things the right way. If you're opening, if you're starting a church or a ministry, open a trust and do it. Now, don't say when they come for persecution, the uh, police officer will come and say, "Who told you to start church?" Uh, and don't say, oh, "God told me." And God told you, "What God is this?" Then you'll start sharing the gospel with him. Then gone. No, you you have your papers, right, sir? See, I have my papers. I opened legally, I can start a church. So I have the papers, I have the documents with me. I have not forcefully asked anyone to chase. At least you have some backup. Now imagine during persecution, right? Churches are being persecuted, you don't have papers. Who told you to start the church? Show your where is the documents of your church? I don't have documents. My documents are in heaven. They'll send you to heaven. That's what's gonna happen. <laughs> right? You got to have the papers, at least some kind of backup, right? Um, so that is very important. Now, if you're if you're buying a a, a, a church place or you're buying a, or renting a place, you need that document. We are a church, and that owner will say, "Okay, show me the documents. Who's the you know who's the leader of this church? I am the leader. How do I know? No, I, I'm telling. I'm the leader. God gave me the vision, and I'm telling." That guy will say, you forget all that. I have to show the government office there. Give me the papers of your of your church. I'm not saying I won't give. You want hall? I'll give you hall. But just give me the papers. And this is another reason why many churches go through trouble. Not doing things the right way. Right? So that we, we must be right. In terms of bank uh, administrative tasks, bank, banking, a bank account and accounting, Keep it clean, right? Uh, everything that comes in, everything that goes out, have it on paper. Of course, you know, if you're 20, 30 people, you have less amount coming in. But nowadays, you have an option, right? Uh, where you can, you know, now you've got Excel. You don't need a book and diary. If you can maintain it, good, right? So something that we do in uh, some of our churches is we maintain a logbook. 
So we write down this date, this is the offering. This date is a, so the entire year we have a book and we have it also on digital format. So if the book gets lost, it's not like we are we are in trouble. No, we have everything here. Right. So in a time and age that we are in, we should have both. Right? We can do it. Uh, and uh, there'll come a time when we are maybe 100, 200 people. We can hire an accountant to look after this. As the funds increase, you have an accountant who can work part time and fulfill these tasks. And make sure that uh, we comply with every government regulations. Right. Uh, so if there are government regulations, noise decibels should be at a certain level, comply to it. If there are, if you're in a, you know, residential area, don't have one, you know, speakers fixed in the residential area and that dole and all that, and start banging the drums loudly. I've noticed this, especially when I go to North India, and I feel bad for those around. So many times I've gone and asked the pastor, who are around? Ah, oh, nothing will happen. They won't do it. They're all houses. I said, but you're disturbing them. No, nothing. Parmeshwar ka kam hai. I said, it's okay. So whatever Parmeshwar, see, we need to learn to, you know, be, value others. Right? As so We can't just, you know, make a lot of noise. Learn how to be. Right? These are, I know that the setting is very different, but the people are the same. Right? The people, the same thing if it's another religion, you know, making loud music near our house, will we not get irritated and upset? We will. Right. So we need to learn how to be also. Right. So comply, learn to comply with government regulations. Um, be aware of matters that are happening within the organization, within the trust. And, um, you know, these are certain points that we, we need to apply when it comes to church planting. Is that OK? Did it make sense? Is it something that? Yeah? Uh, of course, as we keep doing it, as we keep, um, you know, if we get opportunities, learn from your pastors, ask questions, talk to your senior pastor, ask them how you started. I think I've asked, asked them more than 100 times, and I keep asking. I'll ask again and again. It just gives you an opportunity to learn, right? So learn from others, learn from people, and uh, I'm sure this is going to be helpful for you and your ministries. All right, let's close in prayer. Any questions? Questions. Okay, let's pray. Father, we thank you for teaching us some of the practical aspects when it comes to a local church of God. Lord, we thank you that, Lord, in everything we can trust in you, that you are in control of God. And, Lord, even as we plan, as we prepare, as we think about all of this of God, we pray, Holy Spirit, that you will bring direction, you will bring clarity, you will give us the wisdom, the grace to do everything that you have called us to do. We thank you for each one of us here, God, the students here, and those listening online. I pray, God, that you will speak and continue to minister and reveal your plans, your purposes in each of our lives, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, those online. See you next week. God bless.